off. Uh, we're probably going to get some people joining us as it goes. Um, no worries. Well, that's fine. The first few slides anyway, just whilst I'm, um, I'm presenting, I'm looking how to present the screen. Um, the first initial slides that we're going to go through anyway are very much kind of on, um, you know, setting the scene, that kind of thing. So it gives everyone a nice chance to get in and uh, not miss too much of the content, which is good. Um, right. It's just preparing to share screen. Can everyone see? the training content yeah we can fantastic all right let's just get myself set up excuse me for two seconds okay so shall we begin go for it good 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 right so as as we briefly covered um this is the first of two taster sessions uh, where we'll be discussing the critical success factors you need to become a bidding superstar. Now, a point of note, we're not focusing on bid management processes during this initial session. Those will be covered in the practical bid management training that we're launching at the end of January. Now, just to give you a bit of an overview on the training program, um, the focus is on developing bid processes, developing that knowledge you need and practical skills. So it's a slightly different approach to most traditional bid management training um, sessions you might have been involved with. And there's two different packages on offer there. Um, we have a more vanilla process, which is essentially just the generic training that we can provide you on a generic bid management process. But then we've also got a second type of training, which is aligned more to your organization organization's processes. Um, this package would include us coming in, looking at your process, identifying ways that it can potentially be improved, and then obviously also offering that critical friend there just in case you need some additional support um, should you have any live bids available. So, a little bit about me. Always the most embarrassing slide, I think, when you're doing training. So, um, I have a BA, BSc honours, which means I went to uni. So I know exactly what it's like to be a graduate in the workplace. I know that it can be tough. I know it can be overwhelming and it can be challenging. Um, I'm also an APMP Agile project manager. Uh, I deliberately took that qualification because I wanted um, to build my expertise in developing agile bid processes, which is important because my, my main clients tend to be uh, small, medium sized enterprises. Um, I've also had quite a diverse career. So at uni, I had multiple jobs, often simultaneously. Um, I managed coffee shops, I worked in retail, and I was a lunchtime supervisor, which is the more polit politically correct term for a dinner lady. And yes, I did do that for a substantial period of time whilst I was at uni. Um, and my professional career, generally the roles that I've had um, tend to span business development and um, operations. So you can see there I've done recruitment, relationship management, supply chain management with in a procurement company and also bid management. And in 2018, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go out by myself. So I set up two team. Um, which is my consultancy that focuses on bid management. And essentially it's working with small businesses, helping them to develop processes and internal capabilities so they don't necessarily have to outsource that function. Now we've got here why I love bid management. And I think this is really important because it doesn't matter how long you've been doing bid management, we're all human, we tend to focus on the negative. So I think it's good to push those really positive aspects of bid management. Now, I like that it's challenging. As you can see, I've done a lot of different jobs and I find that I get to a certain point and think, can I take this anywhere? Is there anything else that I need to learn? I have never had that with bid management. There is so much stuff that you have to learn and process and it's never the same. Generally bids, even if it's a proposal for a really similar company, um, if they've got the same challenges, similar requirements, the proposals will always always be different. And it also plays to my strengths and my weaknesses. So in terms of strengths, I'm very organized. Um, my English language is pretty good. Um, I tend to be very good at time management. Weaknesses, I am incredibly over analytical, which actually plays to strengths in bid management because you need to challenge the content. So that's just an idea of why I've been selected to give you the training today, because I do have a broad expertise in bid management. And also I completely empathize with what it's like coming into the, um, the bidding market. 
So the aim of our sessions today, um, we want you to help you become a bidding superstar. Now, essentially, we're going to be focusing on critical success factors. And if you don't know what they are, don't worry, the next slide will illustrate that for you. But essentially what we want to help you do is identify those skills you probably already have, you probably develop them at uni, or if you're coming into bid management bid, um, or the bidding market from a different role, they're things that actually can you can move across, you can use them to your advantage to help you to become better at bidding. And the outcome here is to help you work smart, not hard. So that's to achieve quality, to achieve a good result with less effort and less stress, which I think is important to everyone. And it's also to empower you. We know what it's like being a graduate, coming into a business, you see everyone knowing everything, they always seem to have the answers. There might be a bid manager that you look up to and you think, oh my God, how do you know the answers to everything? It's because they've had practice and because they've probably got these critical success factors that they don't even realize they're using. And the good thing about these skills is they transcend processes. So whether your career is going to be in bid management, whether you move across, whether you're just switching companies, it doesn't matter because these are all skills that you need to build these processes on top of. So it really will help you in your career. So understanding critical success factors, what are they? Dictionary definition there for you, a necessary element for an organization or project to achieve its mission. So a good example for a project would be timescales. You have to hit your timescales in order to deliver a project effectively. But these critical success factors that we're going to go through, you can apply to yourself. And they're really important. They're soft skills that anchor the way that, um, the way that you work. And what we're trying to do here is help you to have a really positive mindset when it comes to bid management. And by focusing on these critical success factors, I think the most important thing there is to focus on less stress, less panic, helps you work more effectively. So all of these things that we're kind of trying to give you today, whilst they're high level, actually, they're really important for you to be successful. And here's an overview of the taster session today the taster session that we're holding next week and the, um, the practical bid training that we're going to be starting in January. So you can see here, there's three critical success factors we're going to be focusing on. Now, just a point of note, there are more, there are other things that you can apply and we would encourage you to think about those and make sure that you've got them in your locker. But the things we're gonna be focusing on today are bite-sized activities, um, then we're going to move on to how everyone's role within a bidding team is important. And then we're going to go on to planning and following process. And as you can see, these are the foundation for the practical bid training that we're going to start um, uh, that we're going to start delivering in January. And those sessions are going to be much more focused on the integral elements of bid management and bidding. So you've got things there like process, capture planning, bid management, all things that your team are going to need to know to submit those winning bids. As mentioned, these, uh, the practical bid training is going to be delivered in two different ways. We have the vanilla option or we have those options where we can tailor it to your, um, your bid processes internally. All you need to do is contact us, um, let us know what your requirements are and we can see if we can help you. So before we touch on the critical success factors here, what we're going to do is set some context as to why they're important, because we appreciate that focusing on critical success factors is quite a high level thing. There's nothing tangible here. What we're doing is helping you to develop a mindset. And we all know that bids are hard work. Now, Raquel, I, you were saying just as we came onto the call, you were having quite a horrific day um, <laughs> because... <laughs> <laughs> because of bids. So I think it's uh, I think it's important to note that um, it doesn't matter how long you've been in bids, how long you've been bidding for, you could be doing it for 20 years, you could be doing it for two weeks. It is hard work. It is a job where you need to graft. And there's lots of stuff that you need to learn. You know, we've just got an illustration here of some of the different things that you're going to have to touch upon, that you're going to have to know about in order to be successful in bidding. And this can often be over overwhelming. Now, I don't know how many um, graduates here that we've got on online at the moment who have just been thrown textbooks and said, here's the process, learn it, which is yeah. good. Process is key, isn't it? Process is key. But 
the fact is that in order for you to be able to understand the process fully, you need these softer skills in place. And the good thing is that whilst there's a lot to learn, there's a lot to do. If you do it right, it can be great. You can have a really good time doing bid management. The thing that I like the most about it is that you develop a unique perspective on how your business operates. And just to illustrate that. Um, there are often times where I've been involved in bid management and um, it might be a managing director or a head of finance has come up to me and said, oh, do you know where our insurance certificates are? Or um, can I be able to submit our uh, last two years of accounting? I know the answer to that because I've got it all filed away. And the good thing about it is as you're writing and developing these responses, you really do understand all the different elements of how your business operates. And it's actually quite rare that you get positions like that within organizations. It tends to just be the very senior people that have that level of visibility. But that's something that you have access to and that's something that you can use to your advantage. That being said, I am guessing that our graduates who are online are feeling a little bit overwhelmed at the moment. You've had these textbooks thrown at you. You don't understand the expectations of you. You see all these bid managers creating these wonderful pieces of text and you think, oh my God, how did you do that in an hour? I can't do that. Trust me, everyone has been in your shoes. The people that you're working with are probably feeling overwhelmed. It's just that they're practiced enough not to let it show. So don't worry about that at all. What I want you to do is think about when you first started university. Now, I remember when I sat in my first lecture and it was the, the room was huge. There was about 60 to 70 people in there. We had the textbooks in front of us. They were giving us the overview of the syllabus. And I was like, oh, my God, what have I done? Am I going to be able to do this? How am I ever going to get all these essays done? And I look back at that now and I think I would love to be back at university <laughs> just doing essays, not having to worry about expectations, not having to uh, worry about other people relying on me to get my work done. It seems almost like a utopia going back to university. And that's what I want you to focus on right now. Focus on the fact that when you now, when you look back at university, you think, oh, yeah, that was easy. I could I could easily get a first if I went back again, obviously, if you didn't get a first. But just trust me, you will get there. You will get there. You will understand it. It's just going to take some time. And uh, I, I do love a popular culture reference, as uh, the illustrious RuPaul would say, you got to work. you got to work to get this done. You know, there's no lying about that. We're not going to say, oh, yeah, it's really easy because it's not. But providing you put the work in and providing you do it in the right way, actually, you can be incredible, incredibly successful within this industry. And just a point of note, we want to build your confidence on this course. We want you to be empowered, to feel like you deserve to be part of a bidding team. And you just have to remember that, you know, nine times out of 10, you've interviewed for this job. The market is really busy at the moment. So you've probably been up against hundreds of graduates and you've been individually selected for a reason. The reason you've been selected is because other people have identified those critical success factors in you and they know you are going to be successful. So part of this is developing trust and being able to understand that your managers know a lot more than you do and they've selected you for a reason. So be confident and know that you definitely deserve to be in this position. So as I mentioned before, I think there is a tendency when people go into bidding um, for textbooks of processes to be thrown at you. And actually what we're saying is that's not necessarily the right approach. The right approach is to develop a good mindset first. And to develop a good mindset, you can acknowledge some of those soft transferable skills that you have from university or maybe you've been doing other jobs in other industries that you can actually apply to bid management. And you notice on the left hand side here, we've got things like calm under pressure, problem solver, Work well within a team by yourself. Now, I know you've probably read hundreds of job descriptions. I know I have where you've got um, these kind of softer skills where it describes your profile. It describes the type of person that they want within um, within their organization. And essentially, that's what we're getting you to focus on now. Because you can get overwhelmed with the process, but you need to remember that you have skills that are really important within a bid team. 
And they're all skills that you would have developed at university, you know, things like time management, keeping calm under pressure. I know that there's a lot of focus on coursework now, but if you've done exams, exams are incredibly pressured. You have to get the right information out as quickly as possible within a couple of hours. Now, not even bid management timescales are often that difficult. You know, you, do, you often get a lot longer than that to write. So remember that these skills there might have been times where it was much harder for you and you can apply that to this. And the good thing about this is it helps you apply processes better. Being organized is essential. Being dedicated is good because you can look at a process and you can disseminate it. You can analyze it and you can apply it properly. But remember that practice makes perfect. And again, I come back to that point I made earlier. The fact is there's a lot of people around you who have been doing it a lot longer. Um, by way of an example, with my company, I tend to work with associates who have at least 15 to 20 years experience more than I do. Reason being is I know I don't know everything. I wish I did, but I don't. And there are people who have been doing this job longer than me and I want to lean on their expertise. And that's what you should be doing within your bid team. Feel confident enough to do that and remember that these processes are in place to help you and we'll touch on a little bit later on how you can apply those processes to help you with your planning so what we're going to do now is start to go through those three success factors that we mentioned at the beginning um, of this uh, presentation now, the first one is bite sized activities. Now, for those of you who recently left uni um, and before that, as you were going through school, remember the BBC bite size, they tend to take um, a syllabus and they break it down into tiny little steps so it's easier to learn. That's essentially what we're telling you to do here. So I'll just um, divert your attention onto the, um, the red box here that has a quote from Anna Seller and Jonah Berger here. And what they surmise is that if we expect significant decisions to be difficult and trivial, um, trivial decisions to be easy, it becomes like decision quicksand. What they mean by that is if you think a bid is going to be hard, it will be. No question. It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. What you're doing is you're thinking, oh, God, we've got to write 10,000 words. We've only got two weeks to do it. This is going to be too much. We don't know how we're going to get all the requirements into the question, et cetera, et cetera. Stop. That's not what you need to be focusing on. So whilst the end of the bid is really important and it's the focus point when you start your planning, actually what we're getting you to do is focus on the task at hand. Um, what you need to do is look at the task you have, break it down into smaller pieces so it doesn't become overwhelming. And here we've got an example. And this is, a very, this is probably quite a good example, actually, where everyone has, uh, has been involved in this at some point. So we've got the question here, you know, we, when writing a, tw a 2000 word response, don't focus on the volume of content, focus on the steps. Now, when you're at uni or if you've um, when you're at school, when you were submitting essays, when you were doing your dissertation, there would have been a process that you followed in order to get the right content into your essay. You read and understand the customer requirement. Now, when you're at uni, that would be the set text. Um, say you're doing English literature, you're doing Wuthering Heights. They set you that as the task. What do you do first? You read the book. You read the book, then you read the synopsis for the book. And then do you know what you should probably do? Read the book again or listen to it, depending on um, depending on how quickly you read. I know I try and listen to everything because it makes it much easier for me to comprehend things. You then plan your response. So you don't go straight into writing. Whoever does that, what you do is you structure it. You think about what you need to include. You write it in bullet points. You build on those bullet points and then you make sure that you're submitting the content around those bullet points that answers the question. And then you submit it for a review. Now, when you look at that, obviously, we haven't even got to the point where you've submitted the whole response yet. Actually, this is just a breakdown of the first step that you take. So this is the step when you begin writing and then you submit it for the initial review. And this is how we want you to approach your work in bite sized activities, because looking at a 2000 word response and thinking, oh, God, I've got to write that in three days. How on earth am I going to do it? Really overwhelming. Actually, do you know what? All I need to do to start off with is read the customer requirement. So I'll do that. Maybe take an hour. OK, that's good. That's a nice, easy step. Plan your response again, probably only half an hour. So as you can see, we're breaking down those tasks to help us um, 
be able to deliver them effectively and not get really overwhelmed with them. So what you do, Alison, is you'd break it. You'd look at the question, you'd read it, which I know is always a key point, and you always say, read it again, read it again. Come back a third time, have a break, have a cup of tea, come back, read it. Then break it down. So start middle and end or yes. into various sections if you can. And then wouldn't worry about the word count. But then would you would you advise graduates to then go to their bid managers or their line manager to say, are we thinking that this is in the right direction or in the right, right tone and then work from there? Exactly that. Yeah. So collaboration is key. As you know, with any yeah. bid, with any bid team, what you're looking to do is communicate effectively with each other yeah. and getting those informal, getting informal feedback throughout the bid process is really important. So whilst you've got these key gates, you've got your key reviews that you need to hear. Actually, there's nothing wrong with you then going to the bid manager and saying, oh, would you mind just casting your eye over what I've done here? And again, yeah. as well as getting that feedback early, what that does is it helps to break down the task effectively. And um, the practical way that you do this is through time boxing. Now, for yeah. those of you who don't know what time boxing is, and as I um, mentioned before, love a dictionary definition. Um, it's an agreed period of time during which a person or a team works steadily towards completion of a task or a goal. Now, just to give you an example, when um, I started out in recruitment, um, recruitment is a hugely overwhelming job. There's lots to do, lots of plates to spin. You know, you've got um, organizing interviews, interviewing candidates, doing all the, their selection, doing all the emails that go around it, keeping people updated, et cetera, et cetera. There's lots to do. Um, I found that quite overwhelming. And I wasn't sure how I was able to manage my emails on top of all of these other tasks that I had to do. So my manager sat me down and said, look, in the morning, just deal with those key emails in the first hour. And then you deal with the other key emails in the last hour of your day. And um, then you can you can um, use the rest of your day. Um, to undertake all those other really important tasks. And obviously you keep an eye on your emails and you know you, you um, take a note of them. If there's something urgent, you of course action it. But what that does is it sets a period of time for you to be able to deliver your work in. And whilst that sounds restrictive, actually it's really good for structuring your day. And importantly, if you've got multiple bids or if you're doing bid management, um, just as almost a favor because you're doing other jobs and someone said, oh, can you write this bid for? me which often happens um, it's a really good way of structuring your work into BAU um, so another good thing about time boxing is it can help stretch you it can help improve your capability and the way you do that is you set your own expectations for the work that you deliver so a case in point it might take you a day to write that 2000 word response if it takes you a day, the next time you go to write 2000 res uh, word response, think, actually, do you know what? I'm going to try and do this in six hours rather than eight. And then you try and hit that deadline. And then the next time you do it, you think, actually, I'm going to try and hit that in four hours rather than six. And what you're doing there is encouraging your own professional development. But also you're taking into account what work you can do in a period of time. So you're able to set the expectations with with the bid manager as well. So you can actively go to them and say confidently, I know it's going to take me a day to do this. And that helps them plan the other activities around your work. But remember that no one is expecting instant perfection. The whole point of a bid process is it's iterative. It improves over time. We're not looking for you to write a perfect answer first time, although obviously there's benefits to that, but that's not the expectation. The expectation is that you're developing content that then can be built upon and can be stretched and challenged in order to make it better. Now, for those of you who were at uni and uh, may have studied Marxism, uh, you will note that this is part of the definition of communism. Um, individuals contribute according to their capability. But bear with me, it does fit here. It's not just some erroneous reference. So what we mean by this is everyone, everyone's role within a bid team is important. Now, it doesn't matter if you're a bid exec, um, if you're writing, if you're doing admin, if you're doing some kind of PMO role every role is important. And the reason being is even if you're doing the smallest activity, that smallest activity is being taken away from someone else. 
And that means that they can focus their time on doing something that's going to get us more points. They can focus their time on getting a better quality. And we've got here, what you're essentially doing is you're setting up a goal for the striker. You know, they're coming to the goal. You've got the ball. You're crossing it across to them. They score the goal. They wouldn't have been able to do that without you here. Now, I know this can add additional pressure, but actually the mindset to take from this is value your own role within the team. Know that you're important. Know that even if it's a small task, actually what you're doing is helping people to develop a quality bid. And we have an example of this here. So setting up a filing structure. Now, for any of you who have been on any of my other training courses, you will know I am a little bit obsessed with a very nice filing structure. When I see other people's screens and they're sharing and I see it all numbered and it's all down in a straight line and it all looks logical, I must admit it's one of the most glorious things I could see. I very much value a filing structure. But the reason I'm using it as an example here today is because it's a really good way of illustrating how the smallest task can have a really big impact. So if you think um, typical things that people within a bid team will look for on every single bid in terms of information, submission deadline, formatting, does it need to be an Arial font 11? Does it need to be in a template? Um, where are the clarification questions? These are all questions that come up often within bids. And I tend to hear them maybe six, seven times from various different people. Setting up a good filing structure and saving documents in a way that's intuitive and helps the rest of your team can reduce time. So if you think you've got five people on your bid team, they each take 10 minutes looking through an ITT to try and find the submission deadline. Actually, if you had that really apparent in your documentation, they don't need to look at it. You've got five people, 10 minutes. That's almost an hour that everyone across your bid team is spending on a task that actually isn't adding any impact. So by you structuring the information in a really intuitive and user friendly way, you're saving an hour. You're reducing that time down to minutes. And that means that your writers can focus on writing. Your bid manager can focus on coordinating. Your reviewers have time to review rather than searching for requirements. So you have to always hold in your head that your role is just as important as everyone else is on the team. And you are an integral part of that team. So the third key success factor is planning. Now, as we all know, a good structure and a good process equals a positive outcome. Most large organizations have their own bid processes. And whilst they might be different in certain ways, generally they follow the same logical process and steps. The good thing about having a process is it helps you to understand what the next step is going to be. And that helps you with planning. It also helps you get less anxious as well, because you know if you're doing this current task, you know what's coming up next, you know what you need to do to get to the next step. And that's a key theme here. What you're doing is not focusing on the bid as a whole. You're not focusing on the process as a whole. You're focusing on what you need to do to get to the next step. What you have to remember is um, you focus on your current task and what you need to do. And the bid process tells you what that next step is. So use that process to your advantage and make sure that you learn it. So again, we're going to take you back to university and think about this as an example. When you were completing coursework, I'm guessing that your lecturers said, oh, why don't you bring me your essay halfway through? and I'll check it for you. And what they were intending to do by that was not necessarily redline and criticize your work, which is immediately what you think they're going to do. Actually, what they're looking at is they're analyzing what you're putting in that document. They're seeing whether you've answered the question. They're seeing if there's any way that you can improve your structure, improve the content in order for you to get a better mark. Essentially, that's the right review improve process of any bid management process. We're looking at the writing that you've done. You initially do it, we review it. You use that review to improve. And knowing this process helps you to plan. So in order for you to get a good plan in place for you, there are several things that you can do. And it does firstly rely on learning the process. 
So good ways to learn processes. Um, my particular favorite is just drawing them out. You know, you can be old fashioned and draw them out on a piece of paper, or if you've got one of those funky tablets where you can use one of those pens, you know, you can draw it out. But it often comes back to how you learn. If you're a visual learner, draw it out. If you're an audio learner, listen to it. But the good thing is to make sure that you have got this information in a tangible way that you can process it. Always think why in terms of the process. Processes are there for a reason. So if you question why you're doing that step, often you can apply logic and think of what the next step is going to be. Now, the whole concept behind big management processes is they are logical. They're all designed to get you to the next stage and to develop quality responses. So when you think about that logically, you can probably anticipate what the next step will be. And think of real life examples like the one above. It's often much easier to conceptualize a process if you can think of where you've done it before. And actually, there's a lot of synergy between the work you've done at university and bid management processes. We've got here how the um, lecturers reviewing your work is very much like the right review improve process. But as an example for bids on the whole, um, if you were an English literature student, you may have been given comprehension to do, where essentially you're just given a block of text and you're asked questions on it. That's a bid. That's all it is. It's a big piece of comprehension. They've given you all the information that you need. All you need to do is look at it, understand it, analyse it respond to it in line with the question and when you think about it like that and you've planned your answer suddenly bids become a lot easier prioritizing in order of precedence now um by that we mean order of importance and we'll take you back again to taking exams or starting coursework the more planning you put into it and the more understanding you have, the better the quality of your work. Now, your tutors would have encouraged you to do that. They would have encouraged you to read around the topic. They would have encouraged you to go to other texts, go to synopsises, um, use online um, content other than Wikipedia, obviously. That's the one they always tell you not to use. Um, but what that's doing is helping you to analyze the solution as a whole. You're analyzing exactly what it was and what it is that the client wants in terms of the market, in terms of your competitors, in terms of the solution that you need to develop. So in terms of your personal planning, the best approach is to think systematically. You prioritize your tasks in terms of what your team needs. And a good example of that is creating response templates. The reason it's a good example is you might have done your question planning, you know, you know, kind of what's going to be written, but actually it's often much easier to see that on a page. So if you create the response templates for your writers to use, what that helps you do is um, it helps the writers to plan what they're going to write. It helps them to keep on task and keeps focused. Um, it also helps with things like not going over word count. I don't know about anyone else on the call, but it's a bane of my existence when I'm given a piece of writing that's five to six hundred words over for no apparent reason whatsoever. And you've got to waste time trying to reduce the count. Having these um, creating these responses is really important and it's integral. So if it's important, and integral, that's one of the first jobs you do. That's one of the key things that you focus on. And if you've got any questions, engage with your bid manager. Ask them the question, what do you think in your experience that I need to do to make my work better, to plan my work better, to make sure I'm doing things in the right order in order to support the team? And remember, key to this is your bid plan. So your bid manager would have created a bid plan for you to work on. Everyone will roughly know what the timescales are, what you need to do and when. But what we're asking you to do is to break those tasks down. So firstly and paramountly, when you plan, you go to the end of the bid. So think about the submission deadline. When is it? How much time do I have? How much time do I have to respond and do all of these individual tasks? You then factor in the gates and the deadlines that you might have. So it might be that you have reviews. It might be that you have sign off, say um, a bid go, no go decision if you're working on the pipelines and, and that kind of element of the bid management process. 
You build those in and then you have your own structure. So whilst this seems like additional work for you to do, actually, it comes back to that point we made earlier, that when you're doing an essay of your planning coursework at uni, actually the planning element of it is integral. You're holding on, you're not necessarily writing yet, you're making sure you fully understand what you need to do, and what you need to include, and then that's when you start the task. And then we lean on those other critical success factors that we were talking about. Break those tasks down into bite-sized pieces. No one understands the various elements that you need to hit to make sure it's not overwhelming. Use time boxing to your advantage. Make best use of your time and make sure that what you're doing is helping your bid team to create a quality response. So again, rather than focusing on that, I've got 2000 words to write, there's so much work to do. Actually, there's a few key things you just need to hold in your head. And one of them is, and it's the same as everyone else on a bid team, paramount to everything is submitting a quality response. It needs to be credible. It needs to be compliant and it needs to be cost effective. And by putting these critical success factors in place, you're helping your organization achieve that goal. So that was a quick overview of the three critical success factors in Taster Session 1. Um, as mentioned earlier, we've got Taster Session 2, which covers the next three critical success factors of challenge everything, learn smart, not hard, and keeping calm and carry on, um, which is the foundations for practical bid training. And the reason why we have structured these courses in this way is because we feel like traditional bid management process and training neglects to give entry level individuals the mindset that they need in order to deliver their work well. We want people to understand that they are acknowledged. We do hear them. We do understand them. Their input is important. But also, we need their capability. There's things that they can do that are really helpful within a bid team. And in order for us to deliver the processes effectively, we need to focus on the critical success factors first. Alison, I thought that was amazing. I know I've heard it before, um, but I think it definitely takes it back to basics. And I think that... Um, when you're a graduate and you get thrown into an environment which is a new job you've got new people like you've hit the nail on the head you've got people that have been there 15 20 years they're very experienced they know the lingo they know the protocol i think it's easy and i do sometimes you get caught up in this wave of doing stuff and being reactive rather than sitting there sometimes and i actually had it said to me yesterday, it's control your time. What's important? What needs to be done? How are you going to do it? And I have little lists in my book that I tick off. And it's exactly the same in a bid, isn't it? The yep. one thing that never changes is that date never really moves, does it? Um, you no. might get blessed by a couple of days. But I guess when you've got a fire to fight, you, you've got to crack on and get it sorted, haven't you? Exactly. And the thing to remember is, um, and I say this to my clients so often, the fact is there is a there's a definite amount of tasks that you need to do on a bid. And that doesn't change, you know, whilst, whilst um, depending on the size, the task might be fewer. Actually, there are certain steps that you have to go through. Now, if you don't do them at the beginning of the bid, eh, you know, is, is that a bad thing? Yes, because what's going to happen is they're just going to stack up. There's no not doing a task. You know, you have to go through the reviews. You have to do the writing. You have to do the um, you, you have to do the quality check at the end. You have to check for spelling and grammar mistakes. You have to check the clarification questions. You have to structure the bid. If you're not doing all of these tasks proactively, they're just going to concertina and it's going to end up in 3 a.m., you're by yourself trying to write a bid, screaming at your screen because there's no one around. And for some reason, you can't download a document and suddenly it's overwhelming. Where actually, if you put these key success factors into place, it should help to mitigate that. It mitigates risks within bids because it helps you operate efficiently. Yeah, I think there's so much to think about. 
and take away from this and I know that we've got the next one the next one's on the 21st isn't it yes yeah the next one's on the 21st we've got a rundown we try to keep it really light and Alison simplifies like a lot of stuff that we discuss which makes it a hell of a lot less scary for most people definitely does for me um <laughs> So what we'll do is we're going to share now for those of you that are on LinkedIn, that little um, speech bubble that's in the bottom right hand corner of your screen has a link to the our use these better uh, online community. Now, we have had a break and we've come back, but we're going to be cracking on with the new year. We've got the tasting session on the 21st and then as of January, we're plowing forward. There's going to be a lot more when it comes to graduates, graduate support. And we've got various little hints and tips for you that will be invaluable, as well as our paid courses that we're moving forward with in 2022, which could be really, really beneficial for you. It's going to be a lot of information that's on that LinkedIn. So for those of you that are on the LinkedIn, become a member. You need to just click on and um, allowed access because it is a private group. For those of you that aren't, you can drop me a message, drop me an email for those of you that have got my email address. Free, feel free to contact myself, Dave, or even Alison, and we can send over details and information of our next event. And this has been recorded and it's going to be shared on our YouTube channel as well. Thank you all for joining. If you've got any questions, feel free to email it across and get in touch with us. But thank you so much for your time. Alison, you were brilliant. Um, and I can't wait for the 21st of December as well. Me too. It should be exciting. I think, like like I said, I think it's in, it's important to make sure people are, are aware that actually, do you know what, all the qualifications you can have in the world, all the experience counts for nothing unless you've got the right mindset. Yeah. And it's a big thing. It's attitude, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so thank you so much, guys. Thanks for joining us. And hopefully we'll see you on the 21st. But we'll be posting the recording on LinkedIn as well, I think. So see you soon and I'll see you next week. Bye, Bye Liana. Everyone.